Whoa, the banks don't like gold, do they? They don't like silver. They don't like gold and silver businesses. There's a lot of issues at the moment for bullion-based businesses and customers out there looking to actually take some money away from the bankers. And for that, I think we are all being put on some kind of special list. Sounds a bit conspiratorial, doesn't it? Well, let's examine a bit further and dive in and talk a little bit about banking, gold and silver, and what we can do as consumers to best protect ourselves from the banks. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to another Precious Metal Ramble. We're all on the bank's watch list. Banks don't like gold and silver, that's for sure. And there are a lot of videos out there of bullion businesses, local coin stores that are having lots of issues with their banks at the moment. Some having their bank accounts closed altogether, others, really, it's pretty much imminent, they think. Now, from my perspective as a bullion business, touch wood, I have not had any issues from my bank towards me. But I do know of customers of mine that have run into very serious issues when sending money to me. Of course, my account is in the name Backyard Bullion. And the banks are not liking gold and silver at all. They really don't. And so in today's video, I want to do a bit of a commentary on that whole subject. And whilst a lot of this might be focused at businesses that deal with cash and deal with bullion, it can and probably will end up affecting individuals as well as we move more away from traditional money, traditional currency, and into this world of digital banking and online transactions. The whole premise of the banks is that they want to protect you and keep your money safe. But really, in my opinion, they're keeping themselves safe. So lots to go through. There'll be some high opinions shared in this video. I'd love to know yours down in that comment section below. But otherwise, if you haven't done so already and you like our content, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed as we march on towards the 100,000 subscriber goal. One day we'll get there. So the banks, they don't like the gold and silver buyers. And I've had first-hand experience of that where my bank, NatWest, said no to transactions for, for the Royal Mint. And I was blocked from the Royal Mint for like three days. It was ridiculous. I've done a video on that in its entirety. I'm not going to hash over new ground again, or old ground again, sorry. Um, but the point here is that there are a lot of examples of banks not liking gold and silver. And there's big issues right now when it comes to things like cash and money laundering. And the banks are just very, very fearful. Uh, so I have no doubt that not only are the banks making it difficult for businesses to actually trade and, you know, if you have got a cash-based business as a local coin shop, um, they're making it more difficult. You have to run through a load of hoops if you're dealing with larger quantities of cash and uh, or just generally high-value transactions. It is pretty hard to be in business at the moment. But I also think that those banks are paying very careful attention to the money and what's happening with it. And if they don't like it, if they don't have full confidence in what's going on, they're just backing out. They don't want anything to do with it. And they may even be referring people over to places like HMRC, our tax authority here in the United Kingdom, and maybe even uh, law enforcement to check that things are, all are on the up and up. Because there are a lot of potential ways to money launder and scam when it comes to precious metals. And I'm not, of course, going to go into detail about things like money laundering, but the fact that that is a possibility makes these banks not like it. And that's their excuse. They want to keep you safe. But realistically, they're keeping themselves safe in terms of the risk to them having to pay out if somebody is defrauded or scammed of their money. Now, how does that relate to individuals? So if you are a gold and silver buyer, of course, it can be a bit frustrating, uh, a little bit worrying if you are trying to buy something from somebody or even from a business like I tried to from the Raw Mint. And they say, no, the bank says, no, you then go through this nth degree, this huge inquisition into your personal life from the bank going, what are you buying? Why are you buying it? Who are you buying it from? What do you know about it? Blah, 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 blah. It's, it is very, very intrusive. Now, from my perspective, when I had my situation, I was just, I, you know, they were asking what I'm trying to buy. I said, well, quite frankly, it's not really any of your business. It's a coin from the Royal Mint. That's as much as I can say. It's fairly obvious I'm buying from the Royal Mint, so that's what it's going to be. 
Um, but they didn't like that. They want, they want you to share everything. They want you to literally share every single thing. And I had examples uh, not that long ago, a customer was trying to buy some coins through our intermediary services. He was able to send the money to me for postage, but then trying to send money to the other end, not even a large amount of money either, 48 pounds. The bank blocked him. The bank blocked him for, I think it was 24 hours, I think. He ended up doing the payment 48 hours later in total, uh, but I think that was because he was away. But 24 hours, they blocked his him from making any transactions out of his bank account um, because they were worried he was getting taken advantage of. Um, and it's staggering. It really is. It is not great. So I do think that we're in this sort of modern world now where we have moved away from cash. How do we cope with it? How can we as stackers really make sure that we're doing the right things for us because the last thing that you would want and i've seen videos uh, from um, the black belt barrister really great channel if you haven't checked him out go and check him out um, who's talked about people having their bank accounts their private individual bank accounts closed because they could not account for money that's coming in or out of it and the banks therefore suspect that there is foul play so what can we do to actually mitigate that um, Transparency, I guess, is one thing, but if you, it, it's a fine line, isn't it? Because we all want our privacy, but we also want our liberty to actually continue doing, um, I suppose liberty to do is, is probably the wrong phrase, but we also want the ability to do uh, our own sales as private individuals or even as businesses. And to have to go through the nth degree of an inquisition every time you want to send 48 pounds to somebody um, is in my opinion, ridiculous and you know i think it's just it's not good at all really so what are the future what is the solution to this well i'm not entirely sure there is one unfortunately i have many different bank accounts that's one thing that i would say is in anybody's favor different banks handle things in different ways there are a number of banks that i will just no longer bank with ever i still have maybe accounts with them so for example now west i still have my account with them that i tried to buy my gold with uh, from the Royal Mint, but I will not use them. I just don't want to use them anymore because of that situation. So I have other bank accounts which I can use. And if any of those bank accounts play silly with any transactions that I'm trying to do, um, then I can try others in that immediate moment. It's the how. It's how I've always done it. I will have plenty of different bank accounts. It's not difficult to open them, and hopefully. You know, it's something that you might want to think about. You don't just have to have one. It could be just a second bank account with one pound in it, just as a reserve, just in case. But, you know, that's not financial advice specifically, but what I do genuinely think is that this is just going to continue to get worse. Uh, I do think that there's going to be more uh, reporting and controls. This is now, we're going into sort of a bit of a hy hypothetical future here, but one thing that I've always been very hot on is record keeping when it comes to selling precious metals. Even if you're a business, or if you are a business, sorry, you have to have really good precious metal uh, records for all the reasons I've mentioned in this video. If you get called up on it, um, it's important to have that chain of custody and to make sure everything's above board. But if you're just a private individual selling some gold and silver, record keeping is imperative. Not only because if you're challenged on things, you wanna be able to make sure that you're fine, but Going forwards, like I've had examples of people who've sold some gold and silver through our selling service, and then a few months later have been talking with their bank about a mortgage, and the bank does not like it when extra money comes in. Whoa, I had to provide some evidence for this chap, for his mortgage provider, about the service I used and what we did and how we did it. And it was, it was, yeah, it's not great. The, the banks really don't like it at all. But Sharp record keeping is really important. And I think it's really important because I can foresee a time where the banks are then used. And this is where I'm, this is the sort of the, the closest I will ever come to sort of a conspiracy theory slash, um, it's not even a conspiracy theory. I just think this is how it's going to happen. I think that the banks are going to be the pawns of things like the taxman and the revenue authorities. I think that they will be used. I think it's happening right now. I think that banks will be reporting to HMRC when they have people that are getting large amounts of money coming into their accounts or going out of their accounts. I think that that is something that has been happening and will continue to happen for a long period of time. Now, if you're doing nothing wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. That's absolutely fine. But if you are doing something that's not quite up, up on the up and up and you're maybe not reporting your sales and your capital gains and things. Now, remember, here's another thing, right? 
if you, here's two gold coins right next to each other. If in the UK you sell both of these coins and let's say you're very fortunate and you have, uh, I don't know, 50 Britannias, 50 gold Britannias and you've sold all your gold Britannias and you make, uh, let's call it 500 pounds of Britannia. Maybe you bought them 10 years ago. You've made a lot of money way over the capital gains tax threshold. So you don't have to report it because they're capital gains exempt. And when you do your tax form, you don't declare things that are exempt. But HMRC doesn't know that and your bank doesn't know that. So how are you going to defend yourself? You need to have that record keeping. If you had them as maples and you sold them, you would be liable for that. So you need to have both in and out record keeping uh, strategies for your gold and silver. Very, very important to do. So anyway, look, I am starting to genuinely ramble and get into the realms of sort of almost a bit like a conspiracy. Uh, I don't really like the idea of big conspiracy theories when it comes to the banks. Do I think there's a coordinated attack on bullion businesses and, um, you know, people who are buying gold and silver? No, I don't think there's a cabal of bankers sitting in the high table somewhere going, right, that local coin store needs to be pegged down a notch or two, so we're going to go after them. That's not what I think is happening, but I think it's now the culture of banking and money and the future of money and the um, the evolution of cash. A lot of people think that the banks are trying to just do away with cash. I can see the reasons for getting rid of cash. It's expensive. Cash is, it actually costs money to create. It costs money to make. And it has, of course, material value in terms of coin, coinage. Um, so it costs money to make money. Will uh, they get rid of all of that in time? I doubt cash will go to altogether. There'll still be some cash in this world, but it will be more difficult to use. So there is a lot to think about for the future. Uh, but from our perspective, if you're if you're still watching up until this point, then what can you do to better protect yourself? Record keeping is important, really, really important. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, in ensuring that you're educated as to what your bank's policies are, if you're doing a little bit of trading, for example, here and there, and you're just using your current account, that opens you up to just the bank going, nope, your account's closed. Uh, I had personal experience of, of that when I got started. I, I did not know that I had to use a business bank account. Said a sole trader is what I am, is able to use a regular person account, but often it's against the bank's policies and against my bank it was, so I got told off for it. They said they could have shut down my account, but they didn't. This was ages ago, by the way, not in this whole new modern world. Um, but I had a very interesting phone call going, uh, excuse me, we, we wondered if you could explain why there's a lot of money coming in and out of your accounts on a regular basis. And I was like, oh, yeah, I run a business. And they're like, right, yes, you know you have to have a business account for that. I was like, oh, do I? So, yeah, it was, it was a good conversation. Um, but, yeah, it does happen. It really does happen. So, yeah, anyway, look, that is now my ramble for today. Um, thank you for watching. If you are watching to the end of our videos, it's very nice to hear from you down in the comments. I always get a bit of a kick by telling Mrs. Backyard Bullion that, um, that you are in the Cool Kids Club and you have watched to the end of my video. Otherwise, that's it from me. If you, if you are watching and you're not subscribed, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the way out. We'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.